Did you know you can precisely fine-tune your Lightroom masks with one dedicated slider? Let me show you how that's done. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process from start to finish, so if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video and also feel free to download the raw file to follow along. Now let's begin. Alright, let's do the basic adjustments in the basic panel. Right away I'm changing the profile to Adobe Standard just to lessen the overall contrast a bit because for this image I want to have more control over the contrast. I'm really not a big fan of the highlights in this image. I think because they are so bright we are losing a little bit of detail. I'm going to tone them down until we can see some more, especially in the sky. You can see as I bring down the highlights we can now actually see some of these clouds up there. So that's perfect. I'm also going to increase the shadows, which will help restoring a bit of detail in the darkest parts of the image. That's much better already. Due to these adjustments, we are losing contrast, but don't worry. What we can do to immediately restore a little bit of contrast is to push the whites. This will make the brighter areas a little bit brighter. Just pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping in those very bright areas. And I can also bring up the contrast slider itself and that's looking pretty good. Since the base exposure is quite good already, there's not much that needs to be done. What I want to do next is to adjust the white balance. I want the base shot to feel a little bit colder, so I'm going to tone down the temperature. And I'm also going to bring down the tint. I have a feeling there's a little bit of a purple color cast going on. You can kind of see it, especially looking in the sky. So let me reduce the tint and fix it that way. I think that's much, much better. Okay, finally, I want this shot to look super, super sharp and clean. So I'm going to bring up the texture, which will help with the sharpness. I'm going to bring up the clarity, which will mainly boost the midtones contrast, giving the image some more punch. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze. Again, this will help really, really nicely with the contrast. And that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. What you can see is we did lose a little bit of contrast and also due to the white balance adjustments, this image does look a little bit colder, but we are now going to target certain areas and we're going to make some areas warmer again, introducing a very nice way of color contrast. So let's open up the masking panel. Right away, I want to make that reflection in the water look a lot better. Therefore, I'm going to use Lightroom's landscape mask right here. And Lightroom will give us a bunch of different options from which we can choose. Since I want to target the reflection right here, I'm going to choose the water option and click on create mask. Then to make it look better, I'm going to bring up the clarity first. This always helps really, really nicely with reflections like that. I'm also going to bring up the texture, making it look a little sharper. And I'm going to push the contrast as well. Okay, should be enough. I really don't want to overdo it with the first mask already. Next up, let's make the very near foreground a bit darker, kind of guiding the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. I'm going to create a linear gradient for that, just covering the bottom part like this. Of course, we don't want to affect that dead wood right here in the foreground. So what we want to do is we want to click on subtract and choose select subject. Perfect. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to drop the exposure, which will kind of create a vignetting effect as it makes the whole foreground darker. I'm also going to push the contrast a bit, which will again help bringing the focus more towards the upper part of the image. And it will also make the subject stand out. All right, enough with the foreground. Let's work on the background. And there are a lot of things we can do. I'm going to start with a very basic color range mask. So let's create a new color range mask and I want to target the green tones of the trees right here. We are selecting a little bit more than just the trees but that's okay. In fact I want to bring up the refine slider just to select a bigger area in this image and with all these green tones selected I want to make them a little bit brighter. I'm going to bring up the exposure first for that. I'm also going to bring up the whites and I'm going to push them quite a bit because that will really help with the contrast as you can see. This will also kind of help creating that light effect like those trees are getting hit by the sunlight and it just looks way way better. I also want to bring up the clarity for some more punch and then let's increase the temperature which will make the green tones look warmer making it seem like it's 
golden hour already. So that's perfect. Especially the trees on the left side. I want them to be brighter. So let me use another color range mask. And again, I'm targeting the green tones right here. This time I'm going to tone the refined slider down a bit to really only affect those green tones. And then let me intersect this mask. I'm going to click on those three dots, intersect mask with, and choose radial gradient. Now I'm with this radial gradient, I'm just targeting all those trees on the left side. And in here, I'm going to further push the exposure, making this side just a little bit brighter. Again, we don't want to overdo it, but this is looking really, really good already. Okay, let's see. At this point, I feel like the sky is a bit too bright. And usually what I'm going to do here is to use another color range mask. I'm going to click somewhere in the blue part of the sky like this. Of course, we only want to make the sky darker. In this case, we do need to also target the reflection to keep it balanced and natural looking. I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm making it nice and big like this. I want the top part of the sky to be darker. So the bottom part should be brighter in the sky as well as in the reflection like that. Now I'm going to bring down the exposure and as we bring down the exposure, we can nicely push the contrast of this image some more. Okay, that's looking great. I want to stack another color range filter right away. So let's create a new one. Again, I'm targeting the blue part of the sky. This time I'm subtracting a linear gradient and I'm just targeting the very, very top here. I don't think I need to target the water in this case. Just need to work on the sky for a moment. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure to make the very top of the sky super, super dark. Like this. Beautiful. Now it's looking really good already. There's just one more thing I want to do. I want to target the mountains in the distance. Therefore, let's create a new mask. Again, I'm going with Lightroom's landscape mask. And we're going to choose mountains. Let's click on create mask. Of course, I don't want to select those trees. So I'm going to subtract a color range mask and I'm clicking in those green trees. This is giving us an okay selection. I think that should be fine. But what we want to do as well is to subtract a linear gradient. We just target the mountain in the back like this. I'm going to subtract another linear gradient for the right, for the right side like that. And let me subtract a brush to clean up this tree right here. Okay, and what I'm going to do in here, again, I'm going to slightly drop the exposure and I'm going to bring up the clarity. This will make the mountain in the distance look much, much darker compared to the foreground where the sunlight is hitting the landscape. So we get a really nice looking contrast. I want to do one more thing. Let me create another color range mask. I'm going to click right in here. I want to target just the mountain peak right here. So I'm going to subtract a sky mask to get rid of the sky. And then I'm going to intersect this mask again. So let's click on those three dots, intersect mask with, and choose radial gradient. Create this radial gradient just around the mountain peak like this. And we have the perfect selection. Again, I'm going to bring down the exposure and this will just help make the mountain peak stand out a little more and thus it becomes just more visible, making this whole shot look more interesting with the foreground element and the mountain in the background. Perfect. So here we have the masking adjustments. Let me deactivate all the masks so you can see the difference from before, from a runner flat image to after with lights and shadows created. Now, how can we fine tune those masks further? That is super, super simple. And to be honest, I just recently started using that technique myself. So let's say we want to fine tune the highlights in the green tones. I'm going to use this mask right here with which we are targeting the left side. In each of these masks, we have this amount slider right here. And the amount slider controls how much of these settings are applied on these masks. So if I bring down the amount all the way, this will basically reduce these settings back to zero. However, if you bring up the amount, we can make it stronger. And that means through this amount slider, we can nicely fine tune these settings. Of course, for this mask in particular, we only have changed the exposure. So the amount slider might not be that useful. 
But for a different mask like this one, again targeting those green highlights of the image, we have made quite a few adjustments. And here the amount slider can be really really helpful because we can fine tune all these things we have adjusted on this singular mask in a really nice way. So I want to make them a little more intense. I'm going to bring up the amount slider and just look what it does to all those green highlights in the image, getting more and more intense this way. All right, that's looking great. I also think I want to target the reflection in the foreground. Let's bring up the amount slider again, just helping making the reflection pop a little more. Nice. Okay, then let's take a look at the mountains in the back. Maybe we want to tone it down a notch, so I'm going to slightly drop the amount here. And just like that, we can apply some final adjustments to our masks. Next up, of course, we want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I do want to work on the hue for a moment. I want to bring down the orange hue. And the orange hue will mainly affect the subject right here, giving it more of a reddish color tone. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue, which kind of affects the green highlights, making them look a little bit warmer this way. And then let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the yellow saturation, making the highlights a bit more vibrant. I'm also going to bring up the green tones. All right, I love these rich green tones in the background. I think I want to bring up blue as well. I do like the more vibrant tones on this scene, so that's perfect. For this shot, the luminance tab can be quite helpful since we can specifically target the green highlights and the dark sky separately. So I can bring up the yellow luminance, which will make the trees in this image brighter, giving us a little more contrast. I'm also going to bring up the green luminance. Maybe let's not go too high. I wanna keep a nice balance here, all right. And finally, let's bring down the blue luminance to add some more contrast to the sky. All right, nice. That's it for the color mixer. Then I'm going all the way down in Lightroom into the calibration tab and I'm just going to bring down the blue primary hue and I'm going to raise the saturation just because I really like this effect. I'm doing this for most of my images. It just shifts the colors in a very, very nice way, especially the blue tones and the warmer red and orange tones. That's pretty much it. Now all we need to do is some sharpening in the details tab. Here, let's bring down the radius. Let's increase the details. I'm going to hold on the Alt key while I'm applying the masking adjustments like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. All right, so let me know what you think about this mask fine tuning technique using Lightroom's amount slider. Maybe you didn't know about that and maybe it will be helpful for your workflow. If you want to support this channel, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment on this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you all next time.